Welcome to Santa Fe Island. Because in this time of the year, June until November, they can find more fish in the cold water. Mm -hmm. It's cold for us, but this is wonderful for these animals. The jellyfish right here. They're actually quite easy to spot but you have to make sure that you look down otherwise you might step in something squishy. I don't know if they'll sting you but I'm not gonna take the chance. This is day two of our Galapagos cruise. We are at Santa Fe Island for the morning. This spot is known for lots of sea lions and it's November. And that means we're also seeing lots of baby sea lions. They've just been born. They are so cute. But you gotta remember, don't get too close. These animals may not be afraid, but they are still wild. Let's talk about the animals in the Galapagos. There are 15 known as the Big 15. They are the iconic animals of the Galapagos. Now every island is different. So say you're doing a four night Galapagos tour, you could probably see between 10 to 12. But if you wanna see all 15, you have to stay longer, up to two weeks, to go to all of the islands. But let me show you the animals you can expect to see. Don't step on the sea lions. I was trying to catch up and I literally almost stepped on this guy. <laughs> Hard to tell the difference between the sea lions and the rocks in dry season. We must move on. There will be more sea lions. <laughs> it makes it sound nicer when you say Galapagos in front. Yeah, it sounds exotic. It's not a rat, it's a Galapagos rat. Careful of the sea lion poop. It is everywhere. <laughs> now, this is a very interesting tree behind me. It's called Palo Santo, and I've seen it, Palo Santo, all over the Andes. And it's very important at Christmas time because they burn it. It's it smells like incense. It's like a natural incense tree. However, um, they also burn it because it gets rid of mosquitoes and uh, it's almost like a sage burning. It's considered to be a cleansing. So if you wanna get rid of bad energy or bad things that are happening to you, you burn some Palo Santo. And so I've seen it in little pieces in Cuenca and other cities where people just burn it in a little pot and you can smell this incense smell everywhere. And I just found out that if you touch the tree, uh, if you rub it, you can actually smell it. So I'm gonna see if I can do that. Think right here. If you rub it, yeah, it smells just like incense. That's very cool. So it's like a natural incense tree. It's called Palo Santo, or I think she called it Holy Stick. This is actually not quite a tree. I think it's actually considered a bush. And one of the things I really like about Metropolitan Touring is they do keep the group small. So we have a small English group of, I don't know, maybe seven or eight people. And then the two Spanish groups, because I think we have 20 or 21 people on board. Um, 
each have their own group so you're never feeling like you have to like get close to the tour guide or you're gonna miss something everyone's pretty respectful too if we see something to take a picture of people take their picture and then they kind of move back so that everyone can see it which I think is really great fortunately these animals are not afraid so it's not like they're running away even the birds it's pretty hard to get a bird to run away this right here this tiny thing that cactus is 10 years old it takes that long. So the big cactuses we're seeing, they're 100 years old, but they grow very slowly and they'll probably die at 150. Cactus has a hard life. Now you do need good shoes to be here. Not so bad right here, but we are coming up to this. Now they suggested closed-toed shoes. I didn't bring my sneakers. I actually didn't even think about it, even though it was on the list. All right, let's talk about the best time to visit the Galapagos. So I've been here right now in November. I've also been here in May. Uh, this is the dry season, obviously, so it looks like a desert. However, the weather is fantastic. I would say it's like 18, 19 degrees Celsius. Not a lot of humidity, just warm enough, like t-shirt, shorts, I'm very comfortable. Uh, some people have a light jacket on because it's a little bit windy. However, if you come here, I've been here in May, it's very, very lush, much more tropical, very humid. It's just a different experience. You can't see, you know, the newly born sea lions if you come in May. However, February, March, April, uh, definitely because it's rainy season, it is going to rain, a lot of high, heavy rain, and then also humidity. So I would say wet season, dry season, both equally interesting, different, but you do not want to plan for February, March, April because you could get rained out. And not a lot of people will be here. I think November or May, those are both good dates. I just wanted to say, while we are here, you do need to comply with Ecuadorian rules. So we are wearing masks inside, outside. Um, when I shoot this without my mask on, it's because I've kind of left the group, taken my mask off quickly, but this tour does comply with all the guidelines as well as every other tour that we've passed. We're not gonna have to do it forever, but we do have to do it right now. snorkeling and it was fantastic but I noticed when I got back I actually scratched my leg I don't know on a rock or something I didn't even feel it until I got back I have antibiotic cream but I thought I should go see the doctor because it also looked a little bit inflamed maybe I dragged it over a rock and so she looked at it and said your antibiotic cream is great but because of the inflammation I have something better for you and I also have a cream that will prevent bruising or minimize bruising and so this boat has a doctor that's right if you're not feeling well there's someone to go see very different from when I came in 2013 on a sailboat 
obviously people had first aid training, but there's an actual doctor's office. So she was able to put cream on my leg and then she said, come back after dinner and we'll do it again. So you know what? No pasa nada. Like everything is okay. And it's also nice sometimes, like even if you just have a scratch for a doctor to be looking at it and saying, yeah, it's okay. We'll just put some stuff on it and you'll be good. If it's clear like that, we will have a very nice view of the other side. And this is called La Galapaguera, the place where the tortoises are, Galapagos oh. tortoises. We've just landed on San Cristobal Island and I know you're thinking, uh, I thought no one lived on the Galapagos, that it was uninhabited just by animals. That's kind of true, but not true for all of the islands. There is a local population in the Galapagos, plus all the people who work here, they also live here. Lots of stores, shops, tour places. Last time I was here, I lived right beside the grocery store. Not the grocery store I live next to, but here is a grocery store as well. Lots and lots of restaurants for people who come to the Galapagos independently, but not cheap. It's very expensive as a lot of things needed to be imported. Alright, so I am going to butcher this, but we are now at Galapaguera. So we went 1800 feet, 45 minutes from San Cristobal up the mountain. This is a tortoise habitat where they are trying to bring back the population. There were 14 different kinds of tortoises in Galapagos at one point. Now there are only 11. So this is a spot where they can um, give them a safe space to continue to grow the population. There are over 200 here, including little baby ones, I think, that they're going to release. I've been looking for love so true. When I was down and down along came. So this is interesting because we learned that they keep the tortoises here, tortoise, not turtle, until they're at least four years old. And that's when they are kind of big enough that the rats can't get to them. There are tortoises here that are older and they are supposed to be repatriated into other places, but because of the pandemic and now because of money, they're still here. So that's going to happen soon. Uh, they get chipped so that they can be studied. And there are three of these centers on the Galapagos Islands. And they've been so successful that they're talking about now that they may not have to do it in the future because they've been so successful with this program, which is pretty inspiring to think that this is something that was once endangered and now they're bringing it back and they've successfully brought it back. Welcome to San Cristobal Galapagos. We are in a town. So a lot of people think that the islands of the Galapagos are uninhabited and that's not true at all. In fact, there are people who live on four different islands in the Galapagos. In San Cristobal, this is the political capital of the Galapagos. However, it's not the biggest city. In fact, I believe Puerto Ayora, where I once rented a house, is the biggest town. This is a great spot to go scuba diving. So people who are looking to travel Galapagos independently often come here to do some scuba diving and then you can rent hotels, Airbnb, but you do right now have to book all of that in advance. You have to be invited almost, or you have permission to come here. And foreigners cannot stay on the Galapagos for more than three months a year, no matter what. I'm only here for one day, but I'm gonna check some things out. to say but it's time to go back to the boat it's getting dark 